So we've just learned a little bit more and I wanted to add yet another addendum onto these black and blue butterfly videos which are revealing the last part of God's appointed times, covenant dates, and convocations for the year 2022 which pretty much started in these videos with that solar eclipse on October 25th. Well, I've been telling you that I think God's going to walk us through the entire nine yards of his appointed times, covenant dates, and convocations. And that last day would be the eighth day that God tacked onto the seven days of tabernacles. And yesterday, the dream came in. Just one more breadcrumb, one more clue, one more piece of the puzzle that the Lord sent us. And now we're pulling it together and it's completing the picture that God's painting of his calendar, of his appointed times. I still think that the focus on the taking of the bride will be at that midnight blood moon, November 7th into the 8th. And that tabernacle starts at sunset, November 19th. And then if that all happens, well, November 11th is going to be a very interesting day for this entire world. If that indeed would be the sixth seal of revelation being loosed by our Lord and our Heavenly Father dumping the nations of the world in preparation to making them a complete footstool for his only begotten and in preparation for his only begotten ruling and reigning for a thousand years. That's highly possible. It's going to happen sometime because our Heavenly Father promised it. He told his only begotten, our Lord, our Savior, our Bridegroom, sit at my right hand until I make the nations of this world your footstool. He also said Babylon is going to fall in one hour. He also gave us a whole book of Revelation that I'm referencing to that these things will come to pass. It will happen sometime. And what really has my attention is that all of these things are happening in the heavens as presented through Stellarium. And if you're not getting this, if you're not seeing the dots connected, I can only recommend that you go back and review all those butterfly videos. I must have dozens and dozens of pictures showing that this is what's going to happen. It's produced through Stellarium. I'm not dreaming them up myself. Stellarium's doing it. And there is no better means out there to do this than through Stellarium. If you can find a different method, let me know. I'm all ears, I'm all eyes. But I gave you information through the use of Stellarium that I think would satisfy any jury out there in the world as evidence to the ears and eyes. So you can sit there and argue with me on this if you disagree, but what would be better is if you come up with a better solution. That way you don't have to waste your time arguing. And likewise, you're not going to waste my time or God's time. Let's do it the Berean way and figure these things out. Let's look at the evidence. You have been given the best means possible for this evidence to be displayed. And here comes some more evidence and I'll walk you through it. Again, if you have a better decoding of it, I am all ears, I am all eyes. I just want the best decoding. If we work together, we'll come up with it. So take a look and take a listen and see what this young lady has to say. And then I'm going to show you a former dream of hers that puts things in perspective as far as God giving her the complete timeline, starting with Rosh Hashanah, God's first day of the month of the head of the year, which happened on May 2nd. But that's what she saw in this particular dream. And now she got the tail end of it, which brings us right up to that eighth day, the holy convocation that God tacked on to the seven days of tabernacles. She got the complete timeline. It just took two dreams. And it confirms to me that God indeed had planned all along to walk us through his entire seven-month Shemitah, as I call it, of the seven months that contain his appointed times, his covenant dates, and his holy convocations. And that started on May 2nd, and it goes to the end of tabernacles onto that eighth day, which concludes at sundown the 17th of November. Remember that date. Sundown, November 17th. That concludes that eighth day holy convocation of tabernacles. And I ended up having this dream. And this picture you're seeing on the screen is, it's kind of what I saw. It's not really what I saw, but it's the best thing I could find that, that um, I'm going to lead up to what, how I got to that. So this is kind of the scene I had that I was seeing. I was in a neighborhood 
um, I started to see pink kind of dust, glittery dust cloud that started to kind of move across the, the screen here. This is what I saw. And it was this pink glittery dust cloud that was, it was, it was way behind the tree line, but I couldn't get it behind there. You go, um, it was just moving across the sky like this. Um, and I remember saying my mom, oh my gosh, mom, look at this. And um, she wasn't really paying attention, but I, I just seeing this thing rolling across the sky, like really slow in the distance. Um, and um, after this, I, I, the next thing I saw was um, this. And you know, I didn't necessarily see this. I just knew it was there. Um, and it was these three moons and they were moving and it was in kind of, I already knew, I knew that it was in a succession of like right to left. So this one, um, it had this imprint of a butterfly on it. Um, and I knew that was the first one. And then it moved to this one here where it was this imprint of a man's face. And I, I don't really know what that means. Um, and then it moved to this one where there was a, an, an imprint of an owl on this moon. Um, and so, I, like I said, I didn't really see this. I just knew it was there. I was really just seeing, you know, all the stars. I just, this was kind of off on the side where I knew it was over there. Um, and I knew it was in this order. And I, I looked back up and the next thing I saw was this scene. It was this just sky full of stars and there was this big tree and in the tree there was this um, star and it was kind of shining like that in the tree line where I couldn't really see all of it it was just kind of there in this tree line shining um, um, I looked and moved to the right and I saw that light and it started to get bigger and bigger and bigger and brighter and it was almost like the outer edges you know how water ripples it kind of was doing that it was rippling on the out, outer edges and it was getting bigger and as it was doing that it had kind of some some color to it on the outside like similar to what you're going to see here um and at that moment that i saw that and it got bigger i just automatically felt myself i just knew i knew at that moment it was jesus coming and i just felt myself you know start to float up and the thing that i remember the most was it i was aware my body was there but the pulling that i felt like pulling upward was coming from my spirit and it was like my spirit was being pulled but my body was going with it um and i just remember thinking being so excited and thinking oh my gosh it's jesus um and at that same moment in my mind, I just kept saying, don't look back, don't look back, don't look back. Um, and then I, I ended up waking up. But I'm, I'm going to show you this clip here real quick. Play it. Hopefully it plays. So that, you know, that is what I saw. It kind of like just got bigger until I saw this in the tree line, this big light here and it was like it, it it was it went from a tiny light to this big it, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it was like this this wasn't here um and i'm sorry i couldn't find anything better but this this line going over here wasn't here it was just this light and i just knew in this moment that that was what that was jesus like he was coming and i was going up and then i woke up so what did this young lady just see i find it fascinating the order in which this unfolded. So she talks about in her dream that she's out looking at the sky, apparently with her parents or something like that, and the first thing she sees is this pink dusty cloud on the horizon, slowly making its way across the horizon. And at the end of her dream, she saw this huge explosion that started small and just kept growing, growing, growing until you see what you see on your screen. Later, she went back to look at this, and her computer, or wherever she had this dialed in, got weird on her, and this is what it displayed. And then she left a response in the comment section where we were dialoguing, 
and where she had been sharing these video clips and she stated that her mother after this had happened after she saw this very last clip of the explosion in the pink mist in that mist that pink fog that she saw go across the sky flipping back and forth back and forth well immediately after that her mother took her phone went to an app and the first thing that came up on that app was Beetlejuice 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 I'll show you the response she left in my comment section of course my comment was oh that's just all coincidental yeah right so I suggested that the best candidate or the best probability of what she saw was Beetlejuice going supernova there it was again and when it does go supernova it's going to be about that size in the heavens and when it moves across the heavens it's going to be just as slow as all the other constellations because it's coming out of the constellation of Orion and scientists believe that this is the color it's going to be now this pink mist or however she described it she saw that first and after that after that was happening then she saw these three moons the first moon with the butterfly in it well if you've been paying attention in all these butterfly dreams and what it stands for and when that's all happening with that butterfly then it should be obvious if not you need to go back and watch the videos but it's the two moons after that that really get interesting and they're going from right to left and that is the direction the moon will parade through the heavens on Stellarium on your screen it'll do it from right to left so I'm thinking it's the same moon that first moon being the full moon of the midnight lunar eclipse and the next two moons to the left of it is just that same month that same moon that same moon cycle days or weeks later and I went well if that's the case the next big event will be Orion his right hand pointing at the crab nebula where the wandering shooting star of Mars just zipped past stopped dead in its track did a 180 and started reversing its location and the moon sets right over Mars over the crab nebula over the right hand of Orion on that November 11th so that man's face in the moon I'm guessing that's got to be the face of Orion and it represents that November 11th because that's where the moon is well if that's the case then that third moon will also land on a specific date that is central and specific to something having to do with the seven days of tabernacles and more probably that eighth day convocation that God tacked on to that week-long festival and what did she see in that moon in that moon phase she saw an owl so I went looking for owls where I thought that moon would be on that eighth day of tabernacles that holy convocation and that ends at sunset the 17th of November so as far as that second moon with the man's face in it that's got to be Orion check out part three of this black and blue butterfly series I deal with that extensively and in there you'll see right around November 11th a shooting star a shooting wandering star fly by the upper right hand of Orion and that hand is pointing at the crab nebula which also fulfills part of Rocher's dream of seeing a green comet well here the shooting star Mars flies by it stops on a dime does a 180 and heads straight back the way it came that is on or about November 11th this is when Mars goes into retrograde and literally from our perspective does a 180 and heads back the direction it came just like Rocher saw in one of her vision dreams and as it is heading back the other direction the second it is over that crab nebula that the right hand of Orion is pointing at the moon almost comes into conjunction with Mars and the crab nebula they're on top of each other on November 11th I mean to me that's totally amazing it's not that just one of these objects is way to the left and the moon's way to the right or vice versa or something like that they're right on top of each other November 11th so don't you think that that second moon with the man's face in it is referring to Orion there's no other man-based constellations in the vicinity on November 11th so knowing that what is that third moon that has an owl in it and I'm going if this thing plots the way it's plotting it's got to be talking about that last eighth day of tabernacles that holy convocation 
After all, God is marching us through all his appointed times, all his covenant dates, and all his convocations for the year 2022. It only makes sense that if that's what he's doing, that last moon has something to say about it, that last moon with an owl in it. Huh, I wonder what we find on the evening of the 17th of November, the last few seconds of that holy convocation, eighth day, the eighth day of tabernacles. I just wonder if there's an owl someplace near where that moon's going to be parked. And then I actually went back and looked at the few verses where God talks about Orion. And Orion is the only constellation God names by name in the Bible. And here's one of the numbers I continually have seen for the last many months. 909. Job 9 verse 9. 909. I'll read it to you. It is stated about God, God, which maketh Arcturus, Orion, the Pleiades, and the chambers of the south. Now in other modern translations, it doesn't say Arcturus, it says the bear. But Arcturus is the main star of the constellation of the bear. And probably why some of the modern versions use Arcturus instead of the bear is Job chapter 38, verses 31 and 32. It reads, Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades or loose the bands of Orion? And we discuss that the bands of Orion are these ecliptics or these paths or these lines across the screen that marks the procession of whatever planet is currently being looked at. That could be the sun, the moon, or any of the planets that are trekking across the elliptic of the zodiac. They make these lines or bands. And verse 32 says, Can thou bring us forth Maseroth, which is the zodiac, and the constellations of the heavens, in its seasons, or in his season? Or can thou guide Arcturus and his sons? So there Arcturus is mentioned again. His sons are probably the other planets of the bear constellation. Now this makes a little bit more sense when you finally identify what that owl is and what the chambers of the south refer to. What I could find about the chambers of the south are two constellations, which is Centauri and Argo. They are directly south of the bear, just under the upper half and the head of Hydra. And you might be familiar with the term Argo. In the art depiction in Stellarium, you'll see it as a ship. And it's probably dealing with the Argonauts that sail around the seas in great adventures. And it's possible that that name of the ship is Argo. I don't know. Well, the big question is, is there an owl in the area? And sure enough, there is. It's the nebula Messer 97, or M97, which is the Owl Nebula. And it's just on the corner of the Dipper, the Dipper that's within Ursa Major, which is the Bear. So if we would connect the dots, that being Arcturus, the Owl Nebula, Argo, and Centuri, it forms a box. And that box lies across the bands of Orion. And again, these are constellations or locations or specific constellations in the heavens that are mentioned in those references of Job. References that connect it to the constellation Orion, which was the face of the man in that second moon. Well, we're looking at the third moon. I'll give you one guess where the moon is on the evening, the sunset of our 17th of November, 2022, which is the waning moments of that eighth day holy convocation, the eighth day of tabernacles. I'll give you one guess where the moon is. Come on, guess. Just one guess. Take a shot at it. Well, it's in that box. So you have the first moon, the butterfly, that's got to be the midnight blood moon of November 7th and 8th because that's what all the butterflies and all these videos were pointing to. That was the date. We have the second moon with the man's face in it. That is expressed and explained and decoded in that third video of the butterfly. And it's no coincidence that the moon, the god of war Mars, and the crab nebula line up on that day. That's telling you something. There's going to be something happening on that day. Possibly something about war because we got Mars doing its thing. Mars, the god of war. And that's what all the dreamers come up with in reference to November 11th. The dreamers that have the November 11th date in their dreams. It's a time of judgment, as in the days of Noah. It's the third day of the seven days of tabernacles. Noah's flood hit on the third day of his respective seven-day festival that Moses assigned to that narrative, which was the second Passover. 
I cover that in part two of the two-part series and introduction that is entitled Passover Pentecost and the Seventh Day Weekly Sabbath Lost. It deals with the third day of these seven-day feasts. Jesus arose on the third day. Noah was lifted up off the earth because the flood struck on the third day. And now we're looking at another third day, our November 11th, as in the days of Noah. And here we have confirmation that God is highlighting the eighth day of the seven day, the eighth day holy convocation that is tacked onto the seven days of tabernacle, which I affectionately call the eighth day of tabernacle. Another covenant day, because that is the day that Jesus was circumcised. Circumcision is the covenant with Abraham. And it's lining up in that box, the box of those four points that are spelled out in Job 909 and Job 3831. Speaking of Arturus and the chambers of the south and in her dream the owl. It's right in that box. Can you say coincidence? I can't. And thus just one more confirmation that God's going to walk the church through all seven months, all his appointed times, covenant dates, and convocations in that seven months, that seven month Shemitah. And this stuff lines up and the dots connect only in this year, 2022. I've checked these things against the next tetrad, which is in 2032 and 2033, and nothing gets close, not even close, especially when you're dealing with November 3rd when we see the moon go right into the water stream that Aquarius is pouring out, that being the ninth day of the seventh month, a day of affliction and humbling. Affliction is repentance, where the bride is making herself ready and she's being mikvahed four days before the wedding day. That wedding day has to be on that midnight blood moon, November 7th and 8th, right when that blood moon is standing before the Golden Gate. So the storyline is complete. And if you go to this young lady's YouTube channel, you'll see that she had a dream, I think it was on October 20th, something like that, of this year. She saw a huge full moon, and to the left of it, a smaller, like a regular moon, that morphed its way towards that super moon and went behind it. I am quite confident that that is the full moon, the full super moon of May 15th and 16th, Passover. Because that is the month that this all starts on. The month of Passover is Rosh Hashanah, Exodus 12, 2. So she's looking at the full calendar of God for 2022. From Rosh Hashanah to the last covenant day, the eighth day of tabernacles. And this, in my estimation, is all preparation for the return of the king. Because that is the calendar he is going to follow. That is the calendar that he is going to confirm with many. And all of you out there that think you're a watchman on the wall or a prophet or a teacher or whatever, you best look at this stuff. Because I ain't making it up. It's taking on a life of its own. And I strongly suggest that that life is coming from the throne on high. And if God is investing this much into revealing this stuff, then he is extremely serious about it. And if you're messing around with other calendars and other extracurricular books that don't belong in the Bible, if you're getting your calendar from anything else than X, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, and those numbers that we see Jesus fulfilling, if you're coming up with anything else, well, let me just remind you, it is the spirit of Antichrist that lives to change the dates of the appointed times of God. And apparently, it's been extremely successful. So who are you working for? If you're messing around with other calendars and apocryphal books, if you think that's what God gave Moses, none of which of those books existed back then, well... I think you've got some explaining to do, Lucy, because there's coming a day where God's no longer going to wink at this. If you're not going to get on his sheet of music, then he'll put you someplace else. Not that we have seen God do that multiple, multiple times in all the stories in the Old Testament. He's got no problem knocking you to the curb. Doesn't want to do that, but if you're not going to respond to his word and get this stuff directly from his word and nowhere else, he's got no choice. You give him no choice. And I'll remind you about Watchmen on the Wall, the Shulamite Bride in the Song of Solomon. Well, we read about them in Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 7. And the watchmen that went about the city found me. They smote me. They wounded me. The keepers of the wall took away my veil from me. They beat her black and blue. They sucker punched her in the face. In some of the translations, they said they, it says that they bruised her face. 
These are people that's supposed to be able to recognize the bride of Christ, but turn out beating her up. There's a prophetic there that's going on. The prophetic is there are many watchmen out there that don't know what they're doing. They can't recognize the bride. And anyone who is desperately seeking after the Lord, well, they mock them, ridicule them, put them down. They beat them black and blue. And I'm saying most of these watchmen out there rarely go to the Word of God. Oh, they might do that to find some number that they try to plug into some stupid equation to come up with one of their many dates of the rapture, all of which they got wrong. I've been watching people do this for 10, 15 years. And now God has given them the signs and the wonders and stellarium that they can figure this stuff out. And what do they do? They go to these apocryphal books. They go to some strange calendar. And the best that some of these watchmen do is they open the gates to the city and they let in these Trojan horses because there's a buzz that accompanies these secret scroll calendars and dates and stuff like that. And these people are not in it for the Lord. They're in it for celebrity status. Woe unto you because you're one of the candidates that is prophesied about where the Lord turns to you when you show up and he says, depart from me. I don't know who you are. I know one thing's for sure. I would never hire you for my security force to keep tabs and keep the enemy out of my house. I certainly don't owe you any employment and neither does God. And if you're not going to do it according to his word, he'll find someone who will. And if you don't vet these calendars and vet the sources of these calendars, you are putting yourself and everyone around you and those that listen to you, you're putting them in jeopardy. Test the spirit. And as for me and my house, my calendar is based on the calendar that millions and millions of Middle Easterners practiced at the time of Moses from long before Abraham to current day. And along with that, God's calendar, which is Exodus 12, which is based upon a ripe barley harvest, a completed harvest. And that month, God identifies to Moses as his Rosh Hashanah. And all the other appointed times of God his covenant dates, and his convocations is based on that day, the first day of the month, the month of Exodus, the month of Passover. And there are three items, and only three items, that define the equation for finding that day. The first and foremost is that ripe barley being able to be harvested, a complete harvest, not just a snip here and a snip there. It's a complete harvest because you bring from that the first fruits of the harvest, Who brings it? The farmer. The second thing that determines that is the new moon, which can only be, back then, discerned in that one to two hour period where the sliver crescent moon is first seen. If you go by the three waned moons, you don't know which day you're going to pick. God arranged it so that there is only a two to three hour window between the setting of the sun and the moon setting following the sun after those three days where the naked human eye cannot see any illumination off the moon. There's your three days of darkness and it's on that fourth day that you will see for the first time that month with the naked eye a discernible illumination. That's the second thing that determines that month. The third thing is if you have a four blood moon tetrad, especially a tetrad that's the middle of three. Those blood moons are the blood moons that are attached to those full moon festivals. That being the seven days of unleavened bread, which starts with the 12 hours of Passover and tabernacles. You've got to realize they didn't have computers back then to dial up or discern or to figure out some moon chart or some phase of the moon. All they had was their naked eyes. That being your common farmer, your common shepherd, your common fisherman. They weren't exercised in astronomy or astrology. All they could do is look up and look at the phase of the moon. And God made this methodology for them. Not for the elite, not for all the king's horses and all the king's men, and not for the Humpty Dumpty watchmen on the walls. He made it for the common people because they relied on that to determine when they plant, when they harvest. Their lives depended upon it. That is the calendar method that Moses used. The only one he used. And I've used that throughout the many videos that I presented the body of Christ, teaching videos. It's all in there. It's simple. It's easy to understand. Get rid of the counterfeit. Get rid of the strange incense. Get rid of these Antichrist calendars. Enough said. You've been warned.
And in closing, you all been given the signs and the wonders presented through Stellarium. It's all there. It all lines up. There is no discrepancies. There is no question. These signs and wonders that we're looking at on Stellarium, they will come to pass. What the Lord assigns to them as far as rapture events or judgment events or end time events, that's up to the Spirit of God. You go look at these pictures, these Stellarium pictures, and all these processions of the heavenly bodies presented by Stellarium, it's there in these videos. Check them out, and then you come up with a conclusion. I rest my case. And above all that, get your heart right. Get into that deep love relationship with the Lord. Because all this information, all this confirmation means nothing if you don't have that relationship of the bride. Because he's coming for his bride first. Get into the Song of Solomon and dance with the Lord. And on that note, I bid you Maranatha.